this is uh, an area that's um, increasing interest and awareness. So, you know, for a long time, stroke and uh, people interested in cerebrovascular disease have focused on the blood supply to the brain, you know, the arteries going in and the veins coming out um, and cerebrospinal fluid, thinking of it primarily as something which helps just to protect the brain, you know, gives it some buoyancy. Um, but actually in the last five or 10 years, it, um, it has become increasingly apparent that the CSF plays a really important role in, in sort of flushing through the brain. And this is facilitated by the pumping action of the heart and the blood vessels. And it also turns out that with um, techniques like magnetic resonance imaging, um, not, not particularly fancy techniques, just techniques which you might have if you went to hospital for a routine neurological investigation, you can actually see quite a lot of detail that helps identify that this fluid clearance system may not be working quite as well as it should be. And that includes things like little spaces in the brain around about the blood vessels that start to become visible. You can actually see them on the MRI when they're enlarged. But also there's a system of lymphatic channels which help to drain out the, if you like, the contaminated waste from the brain um, and clear it so that it doesn't um, in, you know, contaminate the clean cerebrospinal fluid. And it washes through the interstitial fluid. This is the fluid in the brain between the brain cells, gets out and then can drain to what are called these lymphatic channels um, and how they get out of the head. And this is something which is known about many, you know, years and years and years ago and then quietly forgotten about and has just more recently come to prominence. Um, and although it's not entirely clear yet what the exact role is in something like acute stroke. Um, it's pretty clear that the effectiveness of these clearance mechanisms is quite important part of things like diffuse cerebrovascular disease, such as um, small vessel disease, but also probably has a really important role in things like Alzheimer's disease, where one of the problems is that you get these proteins building up. They should get cleared out, but they don't. And when they hang around, they start to cause big problems. So it's an emerging area, but I think actually very relevant to the field of cerebrovascular disease and stroke. I think being able to document that there is some evidence in an individual, for example, of um, clearance not being so good means that we can start to work out, are there ways that we could try and improve the clearance? You know, for example, if you could improve these channels and stop them getting blocked up, or whatever, might that help um, prevent progressive brain damage, you know, where, for example, the interstitial fluid and the waste products are, are kind of kept in the brain instead of being cleared out. Um, and that might include things like helping to prevent cognitive decline as part of Alzheimer's disease. Um, it might just be useful as a, as a sort of marker of brain health not being quite as good as it should be, uh, looking at risk factors like trying to improve lifestyle, other things that we should know about already, um, maybe that individual perhaps, you know, um, needs to, you know, have a, have a, it may be things like diet or, or exercise or, um, you know, even things like I mentioned earlier, air pollution, uh, a bunch of other things, in addition to traditional risk factors like hypertension that are probably very important and knowing that somebody is getting a buildup of these signs um, might highlight that there's someone who needs more intensive um, assistance in trying to control those.